I think we'll do a uh, pure watercolour to this afternoon. I've <coughs> done, done a couple of line and washes which seem to be very popular. I shall carry on doing those but uh, I get fed up as well. So I'm just going to draw a sort of a Suffolk Essex, some poppy type fields, just uh, going around. Edge of a field, and beyond that, we'll put a, a green. We can maybe leave a bit of space there, we can have a bit of a, a bit of a estuary. This is all in blue, just the background, and some just a fence. It's going nowhere really, just. Just the edge of a field. That's all we need to do for that. <clears throat> now, <coughs> I'm using the uh, two inch hake, Ron Manson hake. Ron Manson hake, I've cut it down, it's about that long, but you don't want that hitting your chops, so you cut it down to make it comfortable. Uh, my palette, <clears throat> now somebody asked me where I got these from, or where you get them. Well, if a butcher's not looking, nick, nick one of his trays, but uh, but if he is and you have to buy it, I got a pack of two of these from a place I think called the Emporium, the Emporium Warehouse, down in the West Country somewhere, and they were £6 for two, including postage and package. They last, they're very durable, they, unless you keep dropping them, but they're very good. They're, they're um, just display trays, 311 millimetres by 242 millimetres by 20 millimetres deep, white, made by Stuart, I believe. I'm just reading the barcode information on the back of this. My colours are lemon yellow, raw sienna, uh, light red, no, light red, alizarin crimson, uh, ultramarine, burnt umber, Payne's grey and burnt sienna, which I love. Um, so it's just a, a basically simple, but simple things are quite... Uh, Difficult to do because let's put something in here. Let's put a sort of a just a bit of a bit of a spire in there. Suffolk Church. Just a bit of interest. Just sticking out of the uh, trees. <coughs> So, because we're doing wet in wet, I'm using the Fabriano 130 pounds cold pressed. Um, it's a quite a, it's a 130 pounds weight. It's 11 inches by um, 11 inches by 15 inches. It's quite small. Uh, I'm not sure what the metric equivalent, but this is a quarter imperial. It's a very very nice, very white paper. Not a great one for dry brushing if you're not careful. But it's lovely for this uh, for the impressionist type of painting that we're doing. And my, my bit of a lesson in the last one was was simplicity really. Don't try to do things too complicated just because it's there. You have to do selection. It's why copying is good, but if you don't make it a crutch because the artist has done the selection for you, unless they've copied it from somewhere else, and we all we all do. We get our material from where, whatever source. Let's be honest, I've done, what, 327 videos in the last year. That's quite a lot of trying to be original. And I have to say that not so original. It's just clean my palette. Well, most of them are, but, uh, but you know, I'm always using reference material and adapting it, making it my own. Have a bit of cloth handy. The, the, the paints I'm using are are Cotsman 121 uh, milliliter, milliliter tubes, good size. They're student quality, but they're quite inexpensive. I get I got these from uh, Craft Scene. And they're a very good good price. Just uh, look around. They, they should be less than three pound fifty a tube, but sadly, if you go to an art, art shop. They're over, over a fiver, but then they've got the overheads. But, uh, well, you, you, they've got to sell cheaper and be competitive, haven't they? So, 
So let's just put in a bit of, bit of nice blue, a bit of red and a bit of cloud down there somewhere. A bit of alizarin mixed in with that blue. Right, it's sort of a nice summery sky. Right, I'm not going to do much more to it than that because once you start messing around with it, once you put your colours on, you start getting the cauliflowers and, and sometimes they look very nice but sometimes they look awful. So we'll try to get away from doing that. So I'll put in a basic wash over the foreground of um, raw sienna, raw sienna, bit of, bit of, um, ah, bit of dirty, to clean up my colours, bit of uh, burnt sienna to mix with the raw sienna, nice warm field. See the trouble is, um, painting like this, the, the, the burnt sienna mixes very well with uh, the, the Payne's grey and you get some lovely lovely warm darks with it very quickly but of course it mucks up your colour, you have to keep it a bit clean so burnt sienna and a bit of, a bit of nice warm colour in the foreground get that right across there um, probably a bit darker than that Just vary the, the colours. I'm going to try to put some poppies. Now I haven't got poppy colour. What I have got is um, alizarin crimson. I reckon alizarin crimson and a bit of lemon yellow might make a decent poppy colour. But I want that to dry quite light to so that my poppies show up. But that probably, I'll let that dry. Well, I'll give it a try. And then I'll do the background. In the UK at the moment, if you go out about five o'clock, because six o'clock, the sun's setting, you got, and because of all the moisture we've had, you get the gorgeous breaks in the clouds with a lovely burnt sienna brilliance low down the horizon in the west, are just fantastic skies. Go out and look and photograph them, memorise and paint them. It's a God-given opportunity to do that. Right, now I'm going to put in a nondescript background of Payne's Grey and a bit of, a bit of ultramarine. But I'll um, put a bit of red in there. This is my, my distance. I want it fairly weak. Uh, I don't know there. Remember, what you put on dries a bit lighter than it looks. It's just getting that all nice in there coming up. And a bit more down the side of that church there. Now into this we're going to put in the darker colours. Let's come down a bit, a bit more than that. Try and keep your edge in your brush. You're going to use do this blade. Keep the brush nice and flat. Easier said than done, I know. Right, now we're assuming that's that's a bit of an estuary there. And underneath that we'll put a bit of Lemon yellow, a bit of Payne's grey, just a bit of, oh, a bit of blue. Just a sort of a estuary coming in there. Well, above that, anyway. And this is just a field. Okay. Now, on top of that, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put these. Uh, 
nice uh, heavy trees. Now I'll do those with another brush. Just to show you that I'm not a one brush wonder. So I'll use my, my fairly new sable, well, synthetic and sable, I would say. So we'll have a nice bit of burnt sienna, a bit of blue, quite dark. Sort of a dark green, really. So we'll, uh, we'll put that in here. Now when you do this, don't connect it all, just, just some bits of it. Your eye, or the viewer's eye, will tell you that that goes all the way across. <coughs> and now I've just connected it myself, anyway. Right, now we're coming into the darker burnt sienna, Payne's grey. This is how the burnt sienna gets mucked up. Nice lemon yellow in there, because it was a nice, nice dark, nice warm dark. Nice dark green. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I had to get a bonfire going last night and I'm getting over a cold and breathing in all that. Have you noticed when you have a bonfire, when it's all lovely and green, and horrible and green, your the smoke seems to come out of the out of the uh, out of the, uh, the, the bonfire holder, the uh, I can't remember the name of it. Incinerator. follow you around. Go around, Go around the church. Right, carefully here. Just paint around there. Now, a nice bit of red in there just to warm it up a bit. Because we're coming round to the uh, to the other side here. Let's just Now let's try red <clears throat> and play it's grey. See what happens to that. Now try and play very loosely and freely here. The, the red mixes very nicely with the, and since you're going to put in some some red anyway in the poppies, it just give it a nice little bit of counterbalance. So let's just put in some, fix some up there. Okay. It's got a bit hard edge, uh, not hard edge, I wanted that to look like it was a wash that was laid down. Okay. That'll do. That'll do. Now, that's not really warm enough, so I'm going to go over that with the hay again. And just to put in a bit of burnt sienna. over the top of that, just to just warm it up here and there. But I don't want any shadows in this, I want it nice and clean. Uh, let's get that down there. Right, let's just get 
on the top of the bottom. Just wanted to wash there really then. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. Now I'll dry that off and I'll put it in the foreground and I might be, have to resort to a bit of um, a bit of gouache on the reds. I'll put in with the hay cart, I'll put in some some of that lighter ready Payne's grey foreground here. We even put some burnt sienna in there. So let's just put that really, really nice and dark in there. Do some detail in there. Right, let's uh, put in some fence posts. Uh, okay, just a little bit of, just a touch of. Can I put it all in just a, just a little bit? And it's much more dark in there now. Okay. Just to, just to support, and now we've got a lot of detail to do in there with the rigger. Uh, so. Right, I'll just do a bit on that church, a, brief, a fine brush, and uh, that'll do. Um, so we'll, I'll just do it in, in a sort of a bluey, light bluey grey, because it's in the distance, we'll put a bit of a It's a silhouette, really. And we'll put a bit of, bit of a ready sort of roof on it. Oh, that's okay. I'll let that dry and I'll just do a bit of colour, a bit of blue on underneath it. Right, I'll just put oh, a little bit of a spiral in. Well, uh, I'll on top. Yeah, that'll do. That, that'll do. No more than that. Right. Um, now I'm going to use some cheat and use some some white gouache. I'll go back to this tray here, and I'll use my rigger. Nice or oh, a bit of fresh white, I think. Now I've had this too for years and years. It's getting just a bit stiff now. And it's stuck. Oh, I need a pair of pliers it's just to get the lid off. A pair of pliers. In case anybody asks me how I get the lids off of dodgy tubes, look, it's uh, just about, look, it's so thick. But, and I need to dig out a bit inside that, I think. They won't stick. Right, okay, let's let's go in with, with a few with a few poppies. Now, alizarin crimson. Let's put a nice red mix. Just soften it all and a bit of blue bit of lemon yellow, I think. Just a tiny bit. Just this is just to make it more orange. Slightly orangey. And then, I'm not going to use the gouache in that bit, but that's with a bit on here. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I need it very much lighter than that.
I did something like this for my wife years ago. I did a, an oil painting though with a poppy field, but I, I was right at the beginning of my oil painting days. And the strange thing about poppies, they can lie dormant for 20 years, poppy seeds. And then the ground gets turned over, and then they all start growing again. They're amazing, they're beautiful, aren't they? I'm not going to do any details of these, I'm just... The red should say poppies. And then we have some bigger ones in here. Maybe that's the rigor's not a good price to do that with. Let's try out my little... Try them on. Show some wedges and yeah. we've got some poppy fields near us. And I've um, I have painted them. Well, I painted a, a, a version of them from memory. Carshalton Lavender Fields, very well known. They make lots of lovely uh, oils from them and various products. They're, they're so. It's such a beautiful spot. I'm going, I must go there this year and I'll go by bike probably and go on there with my camera or my phone. Now, the centres of poppies have got a darker, I don't know what the technical terms are, but, but um, if you just dot, dot in some some uh, dark out of the tube alizarin crimson it will show the sensors now well I hope it does anyway let's just put it for something no, it does. you can mix a bit of blue in with them but if the, 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 but the darker centre like that, just so a few, you don't have to do more. It's all very, very thin paint here. There we are. Now, now we've got to put in some, overlay some there with some gouache now. This is going to work. Probably won't be bright enough though. I could have used masking fluid for this, but this painting is sort of leading life of its own and I'm just sort of making making it up as I go along. Mix a bit more yellow in there. Right, let's add some more colours in there. This is cheating, I know. It's a, you can't really call it a pure watercolour now. I've done these, but but never mind. It just shows you some other techniques that you can use to enliven your foregrounds. And then put a bit of yellow in there. I think. Mixing that white in with the watercolour makes these paints opaque. So just, just an impression of something going on there. Now 
Now I suppose I, I, I should do something over here and put a bit of estuary colour in that. So with that blue, that nondescript blue there, just just keep that horizon though, keep some light there. Right, okay. Uh, just a bit of dark. Shannon in there. Okay, that's about all I can do with that really, other than put in a few stalks. So I'll do that with my rigger, my, oh, my new rigger, I had it a week. I haven't, been very, I haven't done many paintings this week. I've had to do other things like chopping trees down and trying to light bonfires and a bit of carpet work, which I have to do from time to time to pay for this. I have got some of these uh, demonstration paintings in a gallery in Purley, but uh, she had a flood lately, and so she's had to move across the road just to do concentrate on the framing. So, uh, looking forward to something happening there in the near future. I hope she watches this video. It's the Opal Gallery in Purley, South London. Be more precise, it's the parade, pearly, but uh, but I don't think she's back in the gallery. I've been probably decorated. Right, let's just just rough it up a bit, sign it, put it in a mount, and have a look. A mount trick. I'll move it up a little bit, put a bit of tape on it just to hold it in position. Oops, let's lift this up a little bit. Right, out. There we are, pure watercolour, somewhere in Suffolk or Essex. Field. <coughs> right, that's bled up there, but never mind. That's a bit of character to it. I hope you enjoyed that. Let's go into it a little bit. Just go round. My brother in law lives in this area. Essex, almost into Suffolk, but it's, it's it could be anywhere, couldn't it? Really, go into that to church, little church. It's just a bit of a just an object in the landscape. I'll move my camera around so that it's more full on. All right, let's go into it. So you'll see there's very little detail. It looks like that uh, spire is leaning over a bit, but it's only where, where the camera is yet, so I'm out a bit. Oops. So there we are, let's, let's just come out of it. Ah, oh, that's quite a nice, simple little, little painting. So come out a bit more. All right, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.